your birthday is a multiple of three. So um, one in three people, 9.1 million Canadians will meet the criteria for mental health um, for a mental health issue and at some point in their lives. So I'm Laura Freeberg. I'm a graduate researcher in neuroscience. Uh, and mental health, and I'm going to talk about how our culture has viewed mental health in the past, how it depicts mental health in the media, and how we can create a culture that supports recovery. First, let's talk about uh, what mental health is and the stigma attached. So mental health is a state of emotional, cognitive, and behavioral adjustment, while mental illness is a state where a person can't function properly in their daily lives uh, due to feelings, thoughts, or behavior. So why should we care about mental illness? Well, besides its prevalence and a possibly devastating effect on people's lives, a one in five Canadians experiencing a mental health issue in a year translates to a cost of over $50 billion for the Canadian economy. So stigma um, is related. Less than 30% of people with psychiatric disorders actually uh, seek treatment. So at least this is in part due to negative attitudes toward them called stigma. When people are stigmatized, this may impede treatment participation uh, by diminishing self-esteem or robbing people of social opportunities. Because of this stigma, people may experience feelings of blame, shame, secrecy, isolation, um, or discrimination, and this does not support recovery, but rather it adds to the difficulties that people experience. So up until the prophecies suggested a physiological explanation, People believed the mental illness was due to angry gods or demonic possession. After the French Revolution, uh, Philippe Pinel um, took patients out of chains and shackles and put them in sunny rooms. But the maltreatment uh, continued. Some patients were infected with malaria, put into insulin-induced comas, or lobotomized. Um, these movies all depict uh, some sort of that history uh, to varying degrees of accuracy. Artists have long been revered for their contributions to society, but the concept of mental illness is the driving force behind their art uh, can lead to a failure to comply with treatment. So you've got to ask, where would Sylvia Plath be if she ended, uh, if her depression ended and she were cured? We don't know. The media hasn't helped to rectify these past attitudes towards people facing mental illnesses either. Uh, people are perceived as eccentric, creative geniuses, or sometimes they're gawked at. Uh, or sometimes they can be demonized and reported without actually telling their whole story. We rarely hear about successful treatment of mental illness in the news because the story just isn't sexy enough, right? Imagine a story saying, Miley Cyrus is currently adjusting well to the pressures of fame by eating well and exercising and seeking treatment with a counselor. <laughs> Not gonna happen, right? Instead, we perpetuate, we perpetuate myths like people uh, with mental illness are violent, as in the case of Dexter or Law and Order or CSI. Um, in actuality, research shows that patients without substance abuse history leaving psychiatric facilities are no more violent than the general population. People with mental illness are also painted as incompetent or incapable of independent living, and these stereotypes can lead to prejudice of employers so they won't hire people with mental illness or sometimes of landlords, um, so they don't rent to people who are mentally ill. Mental health professionals are often portrayed as gross exaggerations, so in reality, they're people who are trained to help support uh, the recovery process of their patients. But they're not devils, jesters, or gods, they're just, uh, despite what some of these movies would have you believe. Tony Soprano won't disclose that he's seeking treatment for fear of uh, being thought of as weak. And when really many factors that lead to mental illness are beyond our control. Also, Monk never seemed to get any better, but 70 to 90% of people who seek treatment do actually get better. So what can you do? Well, 46% of Canadians believe that mental health issues are used as an excuse for poor behavior. Imagine if we treated other illnesses like cancer in the same way. Please spread the truth. If someone discloses a mental health issue to you, don't be afraid of making it worse. Actively listen to what they say without fear of long pauses in the conversation. If you think it's a possibility, ask if they're suicidal. If they have the means and a date, that's when it's time to call emergency services. Offer support without judging them, or questioning their beliefs and motives. Offer facts and not advice, and mostly, they just need someone to listen. So, if you or someone you know ever needs to talk to someone, there are many resources available that can give much more information than I can in my five minutes today. Kids Help Phone and the Ottawa Division of the Mental Health Crisis Line are available 24 hours, and if you need to, you can call 911 for mental health issues. 
Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you'll walk away with at least a few more ideas about what it means to be mentally healthy and how you can be a part of a culture that supports recovery. Thank you.